Hello, and welcome to Fallout 76. I am Wiggle, and this is 10 Tips for New Players. Now, this is not meant to be a definitive list by any means. There's going to be lots of lots of other information that you can get. This, this game has a lot to know. Uh, but for starting out, these are kind of 10 tips I came up with, which I think should be the most helpful for anyone who is brand new to the game. So without any further ado, uh, let's get to it. Oh, and these tips are not in any particular order. Uh, they're not ranked or anything. They're just, they're, they're in a random order for the most part. So you're fresh out of the vault. Uh, the first thing I would recommend, tip number one, would be to join a team. More specifically, a casual team. Now, teams are accessed through the social menu right there. And as you can see, there's all kind. There are there are many different kinds of teams. There's uh, what do we have? If we were to create a team, let's see. There are six different kinds of teams. But the one we want to uh, concern ourselves with the most, especially as a new player, is casual team. You get plus one intelligence for every member of the team, including yourself. And a team can consist of up to four people. So if you have a full team, that's an extra four intelligence, which it translates to about, uh, it's 2% roughly uh, more experience for every one point of intelligence. So a full team of, of people would give you 8% more experience for, for just whatever you do, you know, crafting food or discovering locations, killing enemies, you know, completing quests, whatever. So you will level up quicker if you are on a team than if you're not on a team. Now, say all the teams here were full, um, you know, you weren't able to join one. Uh, you just go in to create a new team and you create your own. And if, even if you're the only person on it, that's still a plus one intelligence bonus. Um, other benefits to being on a team, uh, especially if you're a low level player, a lot of times high level players, if they see a low level person join their team, especially a brand new player, they may travel to that person and give them things. They may give them, uh, healing items or weapons or ammunition armor whatever i mean it i wouldn't expect that to happen but it does it does happen so that's another benefit to being on a team so that is that is my first tip now tip number two would be don't always take the direct route to places so the first location that you're going to be given to go to is this one right here called the wayward and as you can see there's other locations along the way that if you just went a direct route right to the location, you would not go to these places. And these locations can have uh, weapons, they can have food items, they can have scrap. You know, junk, junk in this game is very huge. Uh, so there's all kinds of things. Plus you get experience every time you discover a location. And so there's a lot of things you'll see. If you just follow the quests, there's a lot of stuff you're going to miss. So you definitely don't want to just go directly from A to B. You want to detour as much as you can plus it's fun to explore i mean that's that's a big part as you can see it's a very big map there's a lot of locations around the map and there's a lot of cool stuff to see that you won't see if you just you know follow the quest markers so yeah that's number two tip number three is loot everything which means not only pick up every scrap of junk but anytime you see a body uh like this one right here i mean we're still right at the vault uh, and this also goes with the, the with tip number two with the detours, you know, so we're supposed to go that way. But if we go this way right here, we can get some ammunition, a stim pack, which heals you uh, a weapon and money, which is just you can turn into paper uh, and you just go down. Just explore the area. There's other things like when you explore, see, there's a container. We've got a stim pack. We've got a disease cure. Um, there's a dead body. Now, this one wasn't one that I killed, so I can't loot it. It was already dead. But as you can see, we've got uh, all kinds of stuff. Just just by looting everything. And if you go down a little farther, there's grenades, Molotov cocktails. So there's, you know, there's weapons you can use. They're throwable weapons. And there's also ammunition boxes around and bags. See, this has ammunition in it. This will have ammo in it. Uh, just just get in the habit of just looting every container you come across. And, uh, you know, you won't have to eventually. But when you're early on in the game, it's very helpful just to pick up absolutely everything. Because you just never know uh, what you're going to need, what you're not going to need. That's, that's one way to learn uh, what items contain what kinds of scrap that you like. Uh, it's a good way to get scrap. 
It's a great way to get ammunition, especially early on, because you will not have resources to craft ammunition at first. And so everything you can get. So as you can see, just like every kind of container just has stuff in it. So yeah, that's loot everything. All right, tip number four. Uh, you've looted everything, um, but what you need to do is scrap everything as well, especially early in the game. You want to scrap everything, and that includes junk items, uh, weapons, armor. I mean, obviously not the stuff you're using, but you'll pick up multiple versions of the same thing. And so the stuff you're not using, you want to scrap it. And you do that at workbenches. Now, this is a weapons workbench, but there's also workbenches for armor and chemistry and uh, ammunition power armor there's there's a few different kinds of workbenches and you can scrap anything at any of them and as you can see i've got this is the junk i've picked up just in the short time since leaving the vault and number one junk is heavier uh when it's not broken down so you can see my what i'm carrying around is 259 is is my total you know you can see that in the lower left right there 259 so i'm actually carrying more than i'm over capacity so if i just go over here to scrap and do the scrap all, scrap all junk, which is down at the bottom of the screen, scrap all junk. And it also, you can scroll through the list and it's gonna tell you all the, all the components you're gonna get by scrapping. So once I do that, it lo I'm still over capacity, but not by as, you know, not by as much. But I also picked up, I picked up this pipe pistol, which I don't need. Um, and in this game, you learn mod weapon modifications and armor modifications from scrapping weapons and armor. So every time you scrap weapons or armor, you have a chance to learn modifications. Now, I, I probably won't learn anything here because I know I know most of the modifications for these weapons already. Oh, see, I learned one right there. Muzzle break for the, the pipe revolver. So just by scrapping weapons and armor... Uh, you learn the modifications for them. So yeah, scrapping reduces the weight that you're carrying around it re and it also gives you raw materials and it you learn, uh, helps you to learn modifications for weapons and armor. So yeah, that's number four. Tip number five, and this goes along with the, the scrapping and that would be tagging things for search. And what I mean by that, suppose you were going to craft a weapon, say we're going to just a pipe pistol and you can see on the right what, what you need. Adhesive, gears, oil, screws, springs, steel. Now, I happen to have all the components I need to craft that, but suppose that you didn't. Well, there's an option uh, you can see there on the bottom, and it depends on if you have a you know controller or a keyboard or whatever, but you can actually tag for search. And when you do that, it will actually tag the items that you are missing. And that way, when you're in the world and you see... Uh, like scrap items, junk items, it'll actually show like a little magnifying glass next to the item that you're looking. Like here's an example right here. So I actually have adhesive that I'm looking for. And in this tool chest, there's some duct tape and you can see there's a magnifying glass next to it. And that means I have actually tagged the component that th that contains a component that I'm looking for. In this case, adhesive. Uh, another way to tag for search is say you have some of the item that you're looking for, but not enough, you can actually go into the the uh, junk tab in your Pip-Boy and at the bottom of the screen, you, you see there's a component view. So if I do component view, it actually shows the basic components. And from here, I can tag whatever items I want. So say I'm looking for aluminum and it's not, whoops, <laughs> do that again. Say I'm looking for aluminum uh, and it isn't tagged and I want I want to highlight anything that has aluminum, I just do this. And now anytime I come across something that contains aluminum, it'll show the magnifying glass. So there may be times when you don't want to pick up everything, especially later in the game, or in case you're over, over encumbered, something like that, and you only want to pick up the items that you're looking for, this is one way that you can do that. So yeah, tagging for search can be extremely helpful. Plus, early in the game, you don't necessarily know what junk items com contain what components, and that's also a good way to learn. I mean, you'll learn over time, but that's a good way to, to kind of figure out uh, what items contain the stuff you're looking for, like screws and adhesive. Those are going to be pretty common things uh, you're going to want to want. Want to want. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that's number five. Tip number six is to sleep. Now, here we are at the uh, wayward, which is 
Your first basically location that you'll be given is a quest uh, to go to. Uh, and that's the main building right there. But right next to it is this building right here. And inside either door you can go in, there are beds that you can sleep in. Now, sleeping in these beds will give you a 5% experience bonus for two hours. So just by sleeping, and it only takes, you know, maybe 30 seconds to get that bonus, you'll be set for two hours and you'll get uh, a bonus. You'll level up quicker. You'll get 5% more experience. Now, if you happen to die out while you're doing stuff, that bonus goes away. So just keep that in mind. But that's, you know, if you're interested in leveling up quicker... Uh, getting more experience from things, then yeah, making sure that you have a well, that you're well rested, that you've slept, uh, is a good idea. Now, this isn't the only place that you can go to sleep, but this is an easy place early in game. You don't have, you don't even need to have your camp or anything. You can just come here and boom, uh, there's your well rested bonus. So yeah, that's number six. All right, tip number seven: don't buy from machines. And what I mean by that, we're still at the wayward. And you'll see these machines at other places, at train stations and whatever. But I'm talking specifically about ammo machines and medical supply machines. Now these aren't these aren't players selling. This is these are just in the game, right? So medical supplies you'll see, and these prices are high. These are high prices for, I mean, you buy chem, chems there like stim packs for 72 caps, uh, rad X for 60 caps. Uh, those are high prices. You don't want to pay that, and plus. Plus, that stuff is pretty pl plentiful all over the place, so chances are you won't need to buy it. Uh, you know, s depending on how you play, you might, but that's not the way to do it. Uh, ammunition is pretty bad as well. So, pretty common ammunition types: 45, 556. Five, those are pretty commonly used. And as you can see, they want five caps for one round of ammo, which is really high. You don't want to be doing that. You'll early in the game. It's not like you have an abundance of money. And you don't want to use it that way. So yeah, that's that is number seven. Don't buy don't buy from machines. Don't buy anything from machines at all, especially early on in the game. Tip number eight. It's actually two in one. Uh, visit player camps and check player vendors. So these icons on the map, as you can see, these are player camps. And you can fast travel to them. They're not like regular locations where you have to discover them first. Player camps you can always fast travel to. And as you can see, if we zoom in, there's two symbols. This this radioactive one, the red one, it means they have a, a shelter, an underground shelter at their camp. And the V means they have uh, player vending machines. And if you hover over the camp, it'll actually show you the types of things they're selling. This person has armor, weapons, uh, meds, ammo... Uh, plans, uh, drinks, stim packs specifically. And so that tells you they might have the kinds of things you're looking for. Uh, and sometimes vendors can be hard to find. This one wasn't. I just fast traveled. This was the spot I landed in. And the vendor is just right here. This is a, a player vending machine. And this is different than the other machines at the, you know, at the other designated location. This is one that a player put, put their own stuff in and set their own prices. So if we look at the vending machine and say we're looking for stim packs, we go over to aid and you'll see somewhere stim packs. They're 35, which is still kind of expensive, but it's half the price that they were in that other machine. So even even that's kind of expensive, it's still cheaper than it'll still save you caps. Uh, and then if we go over to ammo, as you can see, for the most part, the ammo is one cap a piece, which is way cheaper. So instead of spending five caps on one round, I can get five rounds for the same amount of ammo or for the same amount of caps. And in some cases, if you want cannonballs, this person just wants to get rid of them and they're free. Uh, but as you can see, you know, that's visiting, visiting a player vendor is a, a much better option uh, in terms of, you know, just stocking yourself up. Now, it's kind of hit and miss what you'll find. Sometimes you'll find one that has ammo and, and no stim packs. Sometimes you'll find one that only sells stim packs. Sometimes you'll find one that doesn't have anything in it. Uh, but it's pretty much always cheaper than if you were just to buy from a train station vending machine or the vending machines at the Wayward. And another reason to visit players' camps is to pick up... Now, I've discovered... This character has discovered a lot of locations on the map. But say you hadn't, say you wanted to go to this train station right here, but you didn't have it on the map. Well, you could just fast travel to this player's camp and then it's a short walk 
to that location. So player camps are good for that as well, for picking up new locations. So yeah, it can be very useful. So that's number eight. Tip number nine. So here we are at a train station. This is the White Spring station, but this is a train station. And train stations all are, they're pretty typical. The layouts aren't identical, but they all have kind of the same thing. They have a machine to put your uh, unwanted legendary items in. Uh, they have a stash box for you to store things. They have these ripoff machines right here. Uh, there's a vendor bot inside that you can uh, interact with. You can buy and sell things to that to that guy. Uh, but my tip, uh, number nine, is to get in the habit of searching containers at, strain, at, at train stations. And by that, I mean specifically suitcases, uh, cigarette machines, uh, news, newspapers, whatever you can find. Uh, these kind of things, little doctor's bags. There's a stim pack in there. Uh, you can get like these little sacks kind of things. Um, just And the reason for that is that uh, train stations are, are where people go. They go to dispose of uh, either to sell inside or to put in that machine, you know, their legendary items. Uh, but they end up with unwanted things as well. They just can't fit stuff in their stash or they just don't want to bother with it. And so sometimes people will put stuff in suitcases or in, in these random containers. And you can find weapons, armor, uh, maybe rare plans, maybe stim packs, ammunition, all kinds of stuff. I mean, you won't always. I mean, obviously not. There's nothing here this time. Uh, but very frequently you will. I mean, I found all manner of things, uh, sometimes really good stuff. Uh, so just get in the habit of anytime you go to a train station, just search the containers that are just around around the station and you'll be surprised. You will you will frequently find stuff that other players have just left there behind. I do that all the time. I I put plans in... in uh, in, you know, plans I, I'm not using, you know, plans that I already know of things. I stick them in train station containers all the time. So yeah, that's tip number nine. Okay, here we go. Last tip. Number 10 is to join events. And by events, I specifically mean public events. And you will see these, you'll see this flashing, uh, you know, this uh, flashing yellow with the exclamation point in the middle. Those are public events. And they happen every 20 minutes at, at places all over the map. There'll be one, you know, usually one at a time on certain occasions because there are some that can be triggered by the player. But these are just automatically generated. Uh, and by joining an event, if you click on it, you can see, you know, the difficulty rating of the event, how long it's been going, how many people are doing it, and kind of the type of event it is. And basically most of these things will we'll join the event. Now, once we are in the event... On the upper right, it will tell you how much time is left in the event and give you uh, an idea of what you're supposed to be doing. Now, eventually, you'll figure it out. I mean, there's there are a limited number of events. Um, but yeah, you'll figure it out eventually. Uh, but once you do it, and you'll see at the bottom, I have a quest marker, what I'm supposed to do. Um, this event basically revolves around... Well, I'm not, I won't spoil it. Uh, but anyway... It will tell you what you're supposed to do. And then by doing events, uh, the reason for doing it is you'll get experience. Uh, you'll get, uh, you can get weapons, armor as rewards. You can get currency as a reward. Um, and you can also pick up locations as well. I mean, because the events, you don't have to, you don't have to actually have previously traveled to a location to be able to join an event. So you join an event, and if I didn't know this location already, I would pick it up, and then I could come here in the future. Uh, as you can see, there's you can see all the uh, upside-down triangles. Those are all other players that are here uh, doing doing the event. Now, this isn't a guide to show you how to do events, so I'm not going to go in there. Uh, but yeah, and don't be afraid about, even if it says difficult, if other players are doing it, like don't be afraid to join an event that, that maybe says it's hard or whatever. I mean, nothing... Nothing bad. I mean, you could die in an event, but there's not really much penalty for death other than losing your sleep bonus. So it's it's a good way to get experience and to get uh, to get good gear, uh, to improve your gear. Uh, just just it's all around. Plus, it's fun. I mean, that that's why we play games, right? To have fun. So yeah, uh, this isn't my favorite event, but uh, there are there are some that I really enjoy. So yeah, that is uh, tip number ten, and there you have it. My 10 tips for brand new players. I hope you found this uh, video useful. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you'll join me in the next one. Thank you very much.